Hello and welcome to this quick clip on how to use graphs in chemistry. A surprising number of people come to A-level chemistry with um, varying degrees of graph skills. So what this clip is designed to do is to take you through some examples of how being able to use those graph skills can be applied in a range of chemistry questions. So we'll take you through how to plot a graph using two sets of data and the essential features that your good graph would have how to decide whether your line of best fit, looking at your points, is a curve or a straight line, and some examples of topics and questions where graph skills might come up. It would be useful to have some spare sheets of graph paper to practice on as this clip proceeds, and obviously a ruler and pencil to go with them. If you don't have access to graph paper, you can easily download blank graph paper off the internet, or if you have a, a tablet or a phone, you can upload or download, sorry, uh, interactive whiteboard apps um, and use them instead. So either way, you'll need to have access to um, a graph paper type surface to practice your skills on as we go. So a typical exam question will have two sets of data. So the way you do it is you pick a suitable scale, <coughs> excuse me, based on the data range that you're given. And your first data set would be on the x-axis, and the second data set would be on the y-axis. So I'm using as much of the graph paper as possible. I've drawn my axes using a straight line. Now what I have to do is decide on my scale. So I'll start with the x-axis, which is horizontal on the bottom. Looking at my data set 1, it goes from 4 up to 32. So I pick a suitable scale that allows those numbers to fall within it. So taking one large square to mean 10, I can move the page down slightly so I can actually label my axes. So I write it in exactly as it's written up in the table at the top of the screen. So I've now put my two scales in. I've labelled the axes and I've used as much of my graph paper as possible. Now what I have to do is plot the points. So to plot the points accurately I have to decide on my axes what the squares represent. So on the x-axis scale one centimeter cubed equals two of the tiny squares. On the y-axis scale 0 0.1 degrees centigrade equals two of the tiny squares. So my first point has to be at 4.0 and at 1.2. So I mark my point with an X. Then I do the same for all the others. So this allows us to see a clear pattern. That at 20 um, centimeters cubed of NaOH the temperature starts to drop. So before we go any further Let's have a look at what the instructions were. So the instructions were to plot the results on the graph paper and that was for five marks. So it doesn't say put a line of best fit in or anything like that, so I'm not doing going to do a learn a line of best fit yet. But I can say that I've pl plotted my points pretty accurately because I took my time on each case to make sure that the values matched up. So that's one particular type of graph style question where you have to handle a set of data. Let's now look at another type of graph style question that might come up. So you can see quite clearly where the graph instruction is. So we're referring to the data in the table. So what they've done here is they've done the scaling and they've done the axes for us and they've labelled them. All we have to do is use the data. So, looking at the data, one of the axes was number of carbon atoms per molecule, which we can clearly see from the molecular formula. And it's think, I think it's safe to assume that the origin on the x-axis represents two carbon atoms per molecule. But if you look at the scaling, it would match up. So let's see what the value was in terms of delta HC for the number of carbon atoms per molecule.
And it says quite clearly minus 2, 2, 2, 0. So let's move it back down. So to decide on my scaling for my y-axis, I've got to count how many small squares sit between minus 2, 2, 2, sorry, minus 2, 2, 0, 0, and minus 4, 2, 0, 0. So the y-axis scale ends up being one small square equals 100 kilojoules per mole. The reason being is because there's 20 small squares and the value on the, on the scale is 2,000 between the top end and the bottom end. So we wanted 2, 2, 2, 0, minus 2, 2, 2, 0. So my first point is actually very, very close to the origin. So going back to my data, for four carbons, it's minus 2870. So looking at my other values, you can see that for six carbons, it's minus 4160. And we've got to estimate a value for the number of carbon atoms being 5. Because it says use your graph to determine a value for the standard enthalpy change of combustion of pentane. And as you can see, pentane is 5 carbons. So it's going to be between minus 2870 and minus 4160. So looking at the points, they don't follow an exact straight line, do they? If we were to do an imaginary line of best fit, it might look something like that. So we've got to try and do an estimate. So what I guess I would say a curve of best fit might help me out here. So that might allow me to put my point somewhere in this area. But as you'd probably guess, it's fairly subjective. It's not an exact point they want, they'll probably want a, a range that they can allow. So the best thing to do here would be to use a little bit of common sense. So here's an example of an actual exam question with a slightly larger data set. It asks you to plot a graph of temperature against volume of acid added and use the graph to determine the volume of acid required to neutralise the 50 centimetre cubed of 2 molar sodium hydroxide. So like we said before, reading from left to right, we've got data set 1 as the x-axis, volume of acid added, and the temperature is the y-axis. So looking at my x-axis scale, it has to run from 0 to 50 in increments of 5. So the first thing I do is I scale up my x-axis. And now I need to scale my y-axis. So to do that, I need to look at my data for y and take a note of what my largest value is. So my largest value is 35.4. So my scale has to include that. My smallest value is 17.6. So it has to include that as well. So now I've scaled up my y-axis too, using a sensible scale to include my smallest range, my smallest of my range, and my largest value in my range. So now let's start doing the points. My first point is at zero centimeters cubed, and it's 17.6, which I've now done in blue. I'm going to do my points in blue to make them easy to understand and easy to see. So now looking at my next point. It's 5 centimetres cubed against 22 degrees centigrade. Like so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the rest of the points in. If you want to practice doing this, rewind the video to the point where you can see the data, pause it, and see if you can do a similar graph on your piece of graph paper that I ask you to have available at the start of the clip. So that gives us this kind of plot. 
So I'm moving the screen back up. It says use the graph to determine the volume of acid required to neutralize 50 centimeters cubed of 2.0 mole sodium hydroxide. So the way you do this is because there's two different gradients obviously is to do, do, do two lines of best fit and see where they cross over. So doing a line of best fit through the two parts of the graph where they intersect I can extrapolate down to the y-axis sorry the x-axis I beg your pardon and you can see clearly that it's at 22.5 centimeters cubed. So let's see how our efforts would match up with the mark scheme. So we chose our scales, we labelled them, we plotted our points, we intersect our lines of best fit and we got 22.5. So five marks for our graph drawing skills at that particular point. Let's look at another example. So sometimes, particularly when we're looking at rates of reaction, we'll end up with a curve of best fit. But what if we want to know what the gradient of that curve is at a given point? Well, what we do is we draw a tangent. So you can see at the bottom picture that there's different tangents drawn at different points. Which now I've highlighted with an X. Let's try the same thing on the one at the top. So let's say just for the purposes of argument that on the time axis the point that I've actually chosen is 20 seconds. So what if I wanted the rate of reaction at that time instead of the start? So I draw a tangent through that line and the tangent must touch the curve. So now what I can work out is the change in y with the change in x at that particular point. So I do the change in y over the change in x and I use that to work out my gradient. So let's now try this on a real data set. Okay, so you've got a, a set of data and it's got the concentration of um, ethanoic acid at given times. Obviously the concentration changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose the scales label the axes with units and plot the points. So the first thing I've done is the x-axis with a suitable scale. So that gives us a plot like that. So we now need to do a curve of best fit through it. So you do your curve of best fit freehand all in one go. So let's say you wanted to know what the rate of reaction was at 800. So I draw my tangent at 800 seconds, so I can form a triangle and work out what dx and dy is. dx is obviously 800, and my visual estimate is around 0 0.013 as dy. So that gives me 1.625 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter to the minus 3 second to the minus 1. And a reasonable range based on your own tangent is usually accepted. So hopefully this has been a fairly useful introductory clip to some of the ways in which graph skills are used in chemistry that you'll come across during your course. If when you're doing graph skills type questions in the future and you come across any that you're not sure about, please bring them in to one of us, have a chat to one of us in the subject extension, or have a chat to your teacher. In the meantime, thanks for your time, and see you soon.